Hello and welcome to Noni Yanga's flagship talk show where we discuss the topics that you, our viewers at home, are talking about just a little bit louder. I'm Adi Shopralajiri and today I'll be asking my guests, is co-education a distraction for the pupils and should they remain in same-sex schools? So who are my guests? Well, joining me today are social commentator Dr. Kelechi Anyukude, entrepreneur Priscilla Nwaji and comedian Mr. C. Welcome everyone. Now, they used to say that school days were the happiest days of your life, but I prefer this quote written by a young graduate called Randy Chung in his yearbook. High school was easy, it was like riding a bike, except the bike was on fire and the ground was on fire and everything was on fire because it was hell, end quote. Yes, as Randy found out, when school is really bad, it can be hell. And what can cause that hell are the cliques, the insecurities and the distractions, and some would argue that nearly all all those things are magnified in mixed-sex establishments. Now, supporters of mixed-sex schools will argue that it socially conditions kids to relate to the opposite sex from an early age. But isn't it true that at an early age, boys and girls are miles apart, especially in terms of maturity? In fact, many argue that boys can often be left behind in their early teens because the girls are so far ahead, or worse still, they're responsible for dragging the girls down to their level. Not only this, but at a time when kids are supposed to be finding their voice and identity, the hormones kick in and they're more interested in being cool than doing the right thing. So sport can suffer because girls are self-conscious about their bodies and don't want to be red and sweaty in front of the boys, or boys tend to shun subjects that don't seem macho enough, just as girls have admitted to being put off by the engineering and technology subjects as they seem too masculine in a mixed environment. Now we have to stress much of what I've said is based on first person accounts by pupils and parents as the science appears to be inconclusive across all the above and only girls generally do better in girls only schools. Mm -hmm. But we like hearsay and conjecture here on Noni just as much as we like imperial evidence. So panel, what do you think? I'll go to Dr. Ikude first. What are your thoughts? Better in co-education schools or same-sex schools? I think it's better in co-education schools. Um, the competition between the boys and the girls is, mm. is healthy and it will help um, the boy or the girl you know, become better people. Um, you look at what's going on about you know, assault, sex assault, consent and all that. You need to teach these kids from a young age, mm -hmm. you know. So co-education uh, co or whatever you call it, or mixed schools for me, yeah. is a very, very great idea. Now, when you come to read, hearing what, from what you're saying about boys preferring sports and girls preferring something else, I mean, that, that, that bridge is actually closer now because, you know, with the recent Women's World Cup, for instance, yeah. we're encouraging girls to get into football sports now. So. I think it's good and it will help the country to help the economy, you know, that girls, more ladies are getting into, or more girls are getting into engineering. Mm. Um, so it's a win-win situation. So I think mixed, uh, mixed schools through co-education is... Priscilla, I would like to go to you. What about the, the, the thoughts of distractions? Obviously, in a mixed uh, sex environment, there will be distractions. People will be thinking the hormones would have kicked in. What are your thoughts on that part of this conversation? Yeah, no, I think there's definitely pros and cons in both. Mm. Um, I think for myself, I went to a, a girls' secondary school and then yeah. I did two years at college, which was mixed, and I could firsthand kind of see the, the pros and cons. Um, I, for example, had brothers. I grew up with brothers, yeah. so I, I kind of had that male interaction. And mm. what really affected me in secondary school was I felt like a lot of the girls in my year group anyway were quite small-minded or just thought like girls, and they didn't really see the, other, the bigger picture. Um, I feel like in terms of distractions, there was certain distractions, there wasn't any because mm. there, it just wasn't that level of, there wasn't boys, we didn't yeah. have to think about, oh my goodness, so I need to put on this mascara or do this hairstyle because he's going to be looking at me at school. Mm. You didn't have that sort of thing. You're able to just be a girl, relate to other girls and really also get to know yourself, I feel like, yeah. and get to be, get, get to learn how to coexist with other women, which I think um, when I was in college, for example, I met a lot of girls that I didn't feel like had that same 
mentality, mentality mm. as me and my girlfriends that we went to uh, same-sex same school, school together. So I think in that way, it definitely is um, better, same-sex school. Mr. Mr. C, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, oh, my thoughts, first and foremost, the, the, the quote from Randy. Yes. I, I feel your pain, Randy. <laughs> like, how, how, how can your father give you a name like Randy and then send you into an all-boys school? That's, it, it was hell yes. Come on. <laughs> Hi, hi, guys. My name's Randy. Oh, 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 oh well, probably not today. <laughs> he had to wait and he had to go for the whole of to, to fulfill his potential in life. But to be honest with you, I went to a same sex school. Oh, you did? And being, you know, in a same sex school, once in a while when we had the opportunity for maybe ladies to come to school mm -hmm. or we went to have interactions with other girls, it was very uncomfortable because oh, we weren't used to that. 100%. I mean, I mean what I'm uh, saying. look, I, I, I feel that, you know, this is your, your, your starting point to mm. learn the boundaries as, as boys and girls. You know, you mm. need to understand there's boundaries mm -hmm. and you're going to make mistakes. Mm. And I think you need to make those mistakes in your early years as opposed to when you hit 16, 17. Listen, mm. sure. it's been said that even though scientifically it mm. hasn't been proven that same sex schools have, you know, better results, have shown better results, but it's also been proven that girls do better in same sex I schools. I was just going to interject. Yes. Oh. I was just going to say, I think it is. In terms of same-sex schools, I feel like girls, boys will have more of a negative impact. I'm going to sound like a, such a feminist here. <laughs> I'm proud. Yes. But I feel like <laughs> boys will have much more of a negative impact mm. on girls in mixed-sex schools yeah. than girls will have on, a, on boys. Yeah. So, for example, in a mixed-sex school, I feel like the girls are able to kind of soften the boys in many ways. There's yeah. probably a lot of tension that boys not knowing how to kind of express certain mm. feelings and things like that yeah. at that adolescent age would benefit from having girls interaction Absolutely. however with girls i feel like yeah it just complicates just to it support, too much to support your to support your statement just, there science proves that girls are more mature in, well, in yes no 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 let's stop it let's stop it stop it and i also stop think it. the distraction is actually both ways it it is, thank you very it can, much it can't be the distraction but negative distraction the when negative it comes distraction to is men on the ladies no i mean the negative distraction comes both ways. you should remember that mm. the the boys in secondary school and the girls everybody's now on social media yeah and you know social creates afro it's, uh, what do you call Dance it? Your da everything is now all happening there, and with all the sex symbolism yeah. involved, yeah. Yeah. they mature quickly. Mm -hmm. And then when they see the girl, they are thinking something that's a distraction. Mm. But girls can turn that. But that scientifically, mm -hmm. it yeah. has been proven, and you're a scientist, sir, Mr. Yeah. Do doctor, <laughs> yeah. and you today. Yeah. Well, I need to see that report, and I, I, need, I need to read it and very quickly. it. <laughs> so if you had, let me go to you, Mr. C. If you had the opportunity now to pick a school for <laughs> your teenage son or about to get become a this teenager, kid. Would it be a mixed sex 100%. school, and why would that be? One, it has to be a mi mixed sex school. There's yeah. not, there's no way I'm sending my my son into an environment where he's just going to be brought up. Uh, he's just going to intermix mm. with just men. Number one, myself, I, I don't like too much man around me, you know. <laughs> that's you know, why you didn't want makeup for your face. <laughs> I don't like too much man around me, and, and the thing is, I, I've been brought up by strong women. My mum's a strong woman. My sisters are strong women. Yeah. So. And that's had a very good impact on my life, you mm. understand? So it's like, there's things, there's just, just certain ways how a woman is. I think you need to, you need to embrace that but as a man. But yeah. if you, just as you said, that you've been brought up by strong women at home, then mm. why do you need, uh, the, do you feel the need to want women in school as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I think what it is, exactly. for, for me, for my son, he has to understand the, the beauty of a woman, mm. the, the boundaries of women. Yeah. And most importantly, for because, for, the way our society is now is that you know there's the you know with the Me Too movement there's there's yes. the, the 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 lines the lines are, can be very blurred yeah. and especially as you're saying that the influence of social media that you know it portrays a lot exactly. and it sexualizes things a lot exactly. so if he's not there firsthand and to experience no this is not acceptable to hear females say that this is not acceptable enough, it, yeah. and and to see them in their real light as regards to yeah. the virtual light of them. Then he, he he he. I think he he. I'll, I'll be setting him up to, to yeah, fail. I mean, yeah. and, and, and so need to learn how to support one another. Apart from the distractions, mm. 
I, I used to teach in uh, Camden, UCL yeah. Academy, Camden, mm -hmm. and it was a mixed school. And when the girls are doing their sport, the boys are supporting, when vice versa as well. So that support base, like you do, yeah. I know you personally, you support the Afrobeat <laughs> movement, yeah. the way you support. So yeah. we need to start supporting one another. You need to but teach those kids from... But naturally, the, there are insecurities when it comes to women or young girls when they get to a certain age, particularly be, being active in sports and stuff like that. They, work, they watch what they're wearing to school. And st does that affect when it comes to education, if it was a single, uh, if it was a same-sex school, you would, as a woman, you wouldn't really think about. Well, you would think because those same-sex schools will have no teachers. Mm. Yeah, definitely, you do <laughs> think about it, but I think there is less of a pressure. And they definitely, and they pressure. need that pressure because the way how some of them look, they need the pressure, oh, Master. Wow. <laughs> they need the pressure. They need to know, uh -uh, the okay, can't come at school looks so. up. Yeah. No. In some, I think after, so going through secondary school, yes. being in a mixed school, and yeah. then having that interaction or like on a daily basis yes. with um the guys it can, for some certain i'm speaking for myself but for certain girls i have seen that it can cause them to go mm. slightly crazy do yeah. you know what i mean it's like they've been suppressed of that for so long mm. and then all of a sudden it's like oh my gosh how do we deal with this now okay so i think it can all affect them attention. negatively yeah. but, but you're, you're also saying, i mean you're talking about the dressing and the... i'm gonna i'm gonna put you on pause for now <laughs> dr <laughs> Day, but we will be picking up on this uh, statement in part two. Anyway, we need to take a quick short break, but when we come back, I'll be asking my panel, do they think bullying and mental health problems are more prevalent in single sex schools? See you after the break. Welcome back to Nani with me, Adesho Kweolajide, and my guests, Dr. Kalichi Anyukude, Priscilla Nwaji, and Mr. C. Before the break, I asked my panel, is co-education a distraction for the pupils, and should they remain in same-sex schools? And now I want to widen our debate and ask, do they think bullying and mental health problems are more prevalent in single-sex schools? Stella O'Malley, psychotherapist and author of Bully Proof Kids Does, she says, girls in particular may suffer because although they may do better academically, the pressure to perform socially can be too intense. Psychologist Oliver James echoes this saying, these girls tend to be perfectionist and very self-motivated. When their pairs are similarly driven, intense competition and rivalry can mean results are impressive, but the implications for long-term mental health issues often significantly reduce the potential for them to lead successful, satisfying lives. Although this appears to be less prevalent in boys, the problems are still there. So should we take the distractions of a mixed education over the legacy of a single sex one? Let's hear my panel's thoughts. Let me go straight to you, Priscilla. I know you mentioned the fact that whilst in a girls only school, there was some kind of pressure. There's a little bit of backbiting, a little bit of perhaps <clears throat> bullying. What are your thoughts about what we've just heard in terms of the mental health state of young girls nowadays when being in single uh, in same sex schools? Yeah, no, I completely agree. I completely agree. I think as girls, as women, we are very intense. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, like you said, when it comes, when it's in an educational setting, yeah. it, there is a lot of competition, which is healthy, yeah. but sometimes can be taken out of that positive kind of space and then taken, made very negative, and there yeah. is a lot of cattiness. There is a lot, a lot of it. And I think where I really, sometimes I just wish I could have brought my brother into school with me, yeah. he would be like, it's not that deep, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's fine. Why are you stressing over this? But I think when it's all girls, it's just so intense and there's so much going on that it just, it, it turns into quite a horrible space, actually. Absolutely. Um, so I think boys are definitely needed in terms of that. Mr. C, when Priscilla said uh, girls are intense, I saw the <laughs> agreement in thoughts yes. and actions. They, what, they, why? they are, man. Like, look, mm. as I said, I'm comfortable with women, but however, I've gone to parties where women are in the kitchen, and I'm not saying women are in the kitchen because that's their place or anything yeah. like that, but They're women just, are just in the kitchen. Just chatting around Talking. Yeah. And I will see a man come into the kitchen and a woman will hit a subject and the man will just turn and walk no, straight what? out. Because yeah. he knows that this is what gonna get happen? heated now. Mm. So, mm. you know, and, and for me, it's like, I totally understand it. I, I, you know, m some of my best friends are females. And yeah, it, the, when they have problems with other individuals, it's very, very rarely it's a man, it's another woman, usually in the same circle mm. of friends who are just either trying to uh, outdo them 
or to try and bring different kind of pressures to them. So uh, yeah. I, I think that, you know, and that's big women. So when it's at a younger age, then exactly. it's, it's, it's difficult for them to, to nurture. So to, are we sowing, because you mentioned when it's at a younger age, are we now sowing seeds of them finding it difficult later in life, particularly Definitely. when yeah. when we're seeing the effects of this type of cattiness Definitely. and this type of pressure amongst women? I think the other I, thing as well is that, that, that you know, we, we, you mentioned it before where, yeah. you know, you said that women mature uh, are more mature than men. Uh, yeah. And I think w what we need to do, we need to really look at this properly because I don't believe it. I think in some areas they do. Yeah. However, what you find is that uh, when when girls are very young, they're forced to, to have a mature attitude. So again, it's like mm. the way how girls and boys are, are, are growing up are re really different. Yeah. So women will take on, the young girl will take on this perceived maturity yeah because she has no choice, because it's a given said that girls are more mature mm. than boys, but she's not really. So what happens, that added pressure now of all the other girls around, and so she's got no boys to say, he's what, let's look at him. Mm. <laughs> it's now like, oh my God, I'm not with the other girls, I'm not as mature as that. So that's a lot of added pressure on that young yeah. person, and it's not really true. I would, I, but the, 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 the interesting thing is, you know, mentally it's been kind of proven yeah. and seen that young girls can, appear more mature than their age, um, you know, when their age mates on yeah, the other sex. Definitely. But I wanted to ask you, Kalechi, as a teacher, what are your experiences when looking or teaching young boys and young girls in terms of this intense pressure, rivalry, perhaps maybe even cattiness amongst them? Have you witnessed anything like this? And how, how is it being dealt with in, in you know, in your no, position? It's um, mostly healthy competition, to mm. be honest. And um, they help one another in class. We encourage integration. You know, they help one another. I've not seen any vision about And again, if there are disciplinary issues, it's nipped in the body immediately mm. and addressed. So, yeah, I've not seen personally anything. Nobody has given me any cause for alarm. But I can understand what they're saying. Yeah. An all-girls school, the competition. But that's why you need the boys to distract them positively. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what, what is I this positive say. distraction? Priscilla, uh, <laughs> like I think, to say something. yeah, I think... Even in general, for example, yeah. when it comes to men and women, men, for example, have like a bro code, which yeah. they all stick to. Mm -hmm. And then women don't really have a girl code. There is no girl code, in my opinion. Yeah. Not, not when they're young, no. Yeah. Not when they're young. I think even when they're, I mean, if you no, look at when majority they're, when they're of women. Older, when they're older, they have girl code. But, so my girl code to someone else's girl code could it's be different, a completely yeah. different thing. It's not the same list yeah, of rules yeah, as it is in, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so yeah. What, where I'm going with this is when you're in, do you know what I mean? So yeah. when you're in a mixed school and um, there are things that, for example, one, so maybe there's a group of girls and they've fallen out yeah. and then one of the group of girls goes to the boys and they'll be telling, oh yeah, like leave them, like leave them. Yeah. That's, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It kind of, I, I don't know what mm. the word is, but it kind of, it confuses things. When you're in a, when you're in a girl's school, you learn how to coexist with other girls and, um, get over these yeah. said issues, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That could even help with the maturity yeah. of these. You learn how to deal with them. When you're in a mixed school, because there are boys in the mix, when the boys want to be angry about something that this girl's done, they're off. Do you know what I mean? So this is what I mean. It, it, we need, I'm going off on a tangent, mm. but we need girls' schools and that interaction what, to what kind I, of sort out these what also, issues, do you know what I mean? What I wanted to ask you, Priscilla, is have you seen anything else outside of being in school that are kind of in real life now that you're yeah. dealing with that mirrors those type of maybe pressures, competition 100%. or whatever that you felt whilst you were in school? 100%. I mean, in general, I'm friends with all my best friends in, in, in secondary, secondary school, school, most of them. They yeah. are my sisters now. Yeah. Um, I find it, I'm a friendly person, but I find it hard to make those kind of lifelong friendships with other girls. I've been in loads of different situations where I could have, but it just hasn't happened. Mm. With boys, for example, I have made those relationships. So I think even that is telling in itself. Mm. In, there is still a lot of competition between girls, and yeah. we just, yeah, girls don't really know how to deal with it as well as boys do. I know Mr. C was, uh, you were a little bit shifty when she mentioned girl code. I can give you an There's example. Girl yes. Some girls will say, you know, even though my friend dated him, it's okay for me to be friends and with him. Others, mm -hmm. And other really girls will it. say, listen, if we're no broken way. up, no friendship mm. on this well, level. Th this is where the maturity comes. Mm. So what's the mature? The maturity is if you went out with a man 
and you and him are no longer going out, mm. then be mature enough to give to pass him over to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That means you've still got issues, nah, you've still got feelings for him. <laughs> You're not mature to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm saying about the bro codes. Honestly, yeah, that shit right. Right. No, you, the bro code is the same. Oh, what? Listen. It's crazy as well. Listen, come well on. Let's look at the mental health <laughs> situation now, because yeah. yeah. obviously the writers have pointed out on something very important here in terms of the mental health state of the young kids, you know, in same-sex schools, particularly among girls, this is now starting to show itself and display itself yeah. in, in various ways. We've heard of young girls in Wales, particularly taking their own lives wow. based on the pressures that they face in yeah. school. Cool. What are your thoughts, first of all, what are your thoughts on this uh, amount of pressure that girls are feeling in school? And secondly, how can people deal with that? Not only teachers, but parents on the yeah, exactly. outside. Everybody needs to be involved. Everybody needs to tell them that there's life outside of school. You, mm. know, you must not come first to make it. I mean, I didn't have, I have yeah. a PhD now. Mm. I graduated with a tutu, but see where I am now. So it doesn't really add up. Mm. So mm. just learn your stuff, make sure you're good, make sure you can make impact, mm. positive impact in the society. Yeah. I can understand the competition, but sometimes, yep. yes, it can be a held way in a same-sex school. Yeah. But it's just to tell them that the teachers have a job. And you, as a teacher, you should be able to spot you know, when a student is having, you know, because we undergo so much training, mm. and we need, we need to spot some things. And when it's there, you involve the parents, involve school authorities, and hopefully it gets sorted. But again, we just need to keep telling them that, I mean, it's not that deep. And quickly before we go, uh, I'd like to ask each one of you, what would you do to either make a same-sex school better or a mixed-sex school better? Which, whichever one you choose. I say number one, no social media, no makeup, <laughs> no weave. Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Priscilla? Uh, on on oh. the no social media. I'm, first of all, no phones in school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no uh, phones in school. Fine. Let them be children who they are. Let them get used to their yeah. own identity. What is a global village? Sorry. Honestly. Yeah. Priscilla, what would you um, do to make question. either a better place? Um, I would say teachers need to undergo, undergo more training to kind of spot, like you said, mm. these issues for example that the kids may not necessarily come to them mm. and and let them know i think teachers need to be trained to spot them and deal with them mm. rapidly and uh, you dr Ayukude, what would you do for single sex school or mixed school i would encourage more interaction you know single sex yeah. schools you know competing with maybe a fellow single sex school or mixed school you know mm. more interaction i mean there are games there are competitions all over the country yeah. you know encourage it and um, yeah why not um, Keep talking to them. Or, or mixed sports days, that's what yeah, they should do. The, yeah, the yeah, single yeah, sex everything. schools and the mixed, yeah, they should have, have joint sports, sports days. Yeah. Not only sports, yeah. education, science debates, mm. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. doing the quizzes, good, good. just keep doing it. And, I agree. Um, who knows, yeah. And then don't take away their social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, because nobody, you. everybody can be like a Cardi B. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for your thoughts as well and joining me here. Uh, that's it from me, Adi Shopi my fantastic guests, Dr. Kelechi and Yukude, Priscilla Nwaji and Mr. C. And thank you for joining us. And don't forget, every episode of Noni Past and Present is online at yangatv.com. So wherever you are in the world, you can see this show and other great content from Yanga. We'd also love you to join in on our conversations as well at Noni Chat on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Yanga underscore TV. The best comments wins a nonny mug. Join us again soon for more entertaining chat. Until then, it's goodbye.